Hi, this is Greg Pugh. I'm the author and creator of the iPad children's book, The Perfect Pillow. I created it using Xcode and Cocos 2D, but in the past two days, I've stumbled across Corona and Quick Software. So this weekend, I got to play around with it and decided to try to make a version two of my book to see if I could add even more interactivity without all the coding. So far, my impressions are that the software is very useful and it's also easy to use. I have come into some issues with sprite sheets, so I've discovered a way to work around that and I'd like to share that with you just in case you're also running into the same issues I have. So here's my page that I've created in Quick. Uh, right here, I'd like to have a little speech balloon with a sheep jumping over a fence. So what I've done is I've actually drawn it and animated it in Adobe Flash here. And you can see it's just 21 frames of a sheep jumping. So then what you do is you export movie as a PNG sequence. And it will export all 21 frames accordingly. So once you export them, you can import them into Zwap Text. If you don't know what that is, uh, you can actually just download a free trial of it. And if you want the full version, it's only like $15 or something like that. So here's all your images that you import. The only thing I have did when I imported them is I disabled the trimming because this is set by default and this keeps them the right size. Uh, then you go into publish settings. You decide where you want to save it and what you want to name it. And the important part here is that you choose Corona SDK Lua file. By default, it's going to be set to Zwaptech generic. Uh, before I started using Corona, I always used Cocos 2D, so that would be my export for that in case you want to use that as well. Hit done. You hit publish, and it publishes out the .lua file and the .png, which you would save into your build folder after you've already published out the page without the sprite animation. So pretty much all I've done is create this page and program the buttons with Quick, built it, and it went in my built folder and put in the .png and .lua files from uh, Zwaptex. Uh, what I did next was I used the Sprite Grabber Lua file, which you can actually grab from right here if you'd like to pause the video and type this into your web browser they give you the code that you can just paste into a new file in what you call Sprite Grabber Lua and then you save that in your build folder as well. So once you save that file you're going to open up the page that you want to add the sprite to in this case it's page 4 and you insert local grabber equals requires sprite grabber that's if you named that sprite grabber uh, Lua file sprite grabber So then this is just the code that Quick automatically generates for you when you publish out. Uh, what I wanted for my book was when the user taps on the speech bubble that it would actually make a sheep sound. So what I did here was I just uh, put the uh, audio file in the build folder as well. It's called ba.calf file and I'm loading that in. So here's how you actually get the sprite to play. Uh, local sprite, local sheep sheet, you can call that whatever you want. You can call it my sprite sheet if you wanted to. Your grabber, which goes back to the sprite grabber code, it's grabbing the sheet, count sheep. You don't need the .png here. Uh, then you just say it's visible, it's going to be one frame. There's tr it starts on, one, on frame one, there's 21 frames total. This is in milliseconds, so that's like four seconds long. And the reason I like this method is because if I didn't have a way to time it, the animation would be very fast. And I would have to either animate it really, really slowly or use this method. So since I only wanted 21 frames, I didn't want to go any higher than that. I use this method where if I wanted to, I can even put like have it last 10 seconds. Here I have it run four seconds. 
then you tell your sprite sheet to run and then you just put in your x and y coordinates and where you'd like it to appear uh, this part isn't necessary it's just something I wanted to do I said when the user touches the sprite sheet play the sheep audio which is up here and that was just done through a add event listener touch uh, what you're probably not used to doing because quick does this for you is you have to uh, get rid of all the uh, assets that you've added for memory so what you're going to do down here is you're going to dispose of your audio file so once you turn the page where it's not needed anymore it's not taking up your iPad or your iPhone or Android's memory. Also, you're going to remove that sprite sheet that you added. Usually, Quick would, as you can see, it would get rid of everything for you, but since we're doing this after the page is created, you have to do it by yourself. So, then what you do is just save it, then open it up in Corona, and here you see that it takes about four seconds for the animation to play. And when you tap it, you hear the bass sound. So just to show you an example of why I went this method, uh, say I only want it to take one second. I want to keep it really fast. All you do is hit change the one, uh, command S or control S to save, depending on the software you're using. and there you go now it only takes one second so now it's in fast forward which this was the default I was getting when I was using movie clips in quick and I didn't want the animation to run that quickly and then when I would try to do sprite sheets sometimes it would shift side to side like it was wiggling and then if I went into Photoshop and used the script a lot of times what would happen right here let's see uh, scripts the sprite sheet exporter. Uh, some problems I was running into on certain sprite sheets, it would resize the canvas to like a one pixel by one pixel or a 1024 by one pixel, and it would not actually make a nice sprite sheet for me. So using this method, just because I'm used to using swap text from using Cocos 2D, and I'm also use, used to using Flash for animation, it was a nice alternative to just go in here and add this line of code because essentially if you don't want to add any sound all you need are these four lines of code and then the sprite grabber so if you have any questions uh, feel free to email me and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can